guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I wanted to do a quick video to just chat about things that you might wanna consider doing now to start getting ready for the homeschool year. I know everyone does things a little bit differently. Maybe you homeschool year round or maybe you've been homeschooling for a while and have your own routine down and maybe don't really need this advice. You can definitely still watch and I'd actually love for you to chime in in the comments with your own thoughts to help other moms out. But especially if you're a new homeschooling mom, I thought it might be helpful to just share a little bit of advice, share what I'm doing right now to get things in order and make sure everything gets off to a strong start in August. the first year we started homeschooling when my oldest was starting kindergarten and that feels like both yesterday and a lifetime ago at the same time. He is going to be in seventh grade this year and I'm not kidding when I say that it goes fast. You've heard that over and over again, but it's true. So the past few years, I've kind of gotten into a good routine as far as getting things organized, prepped, and ready to go when it's time for the new school year to start. Much better than I used to do back when we were first beginning. So you might be doing some of these things right now yourself, or you might just be taking a summer break, which is totally fine. Honestly, I want to preface this by saying these aren't things that you have to be doing. You will not fail if you don't do things exactly how I do it. And I recognize that I can be a little over organized sometimes and maybe even think things through a little too much, but it really does help me feel confident going into a new homeschool year. And the point is really to kind of be doing these things throughout the month leading up to your first official day of school so you're not scrambling and wondering what you're doing when it's actually time to start. So with all of that said, I have eight things I listed out that I you know, typically have on my to-do list throughout June and July that I work through. If you can and have the time, I recommend to spread these out and maybe do one or two a week Again, so it's not overwhelming. The first thing I typically do is clean and organize our homeschool space. You guys probably saw my video the other week where I cleaned out our main homeschool area. This really is essential to do, I think. There are so many things that we can accumulate through the year, supplies we use, books that we read, things that served us well, but we just don't need lying around for the next year. So I recommend you take a few hours or a day to pull everything out, store what you're not gonna be using in the upcoming year, get rid of things that you aren't going to ever use again, throw away things that you don't absolutely need to keep. You know, take time to really clean out your space. Um, this is a great time to do some deep cleaning. I will, even though it's a small area, I like to deep clean that specific area just because it feels good to do that. Um, the only thing that I still need to clean out are my kids' desks. They are going to be helping me with that this next week, I think. Their desks are atrocious right now. That is gonna feel really good to help them get those cleaned up and organized. But you know, when everything is clean and tidy, it just feels like you're starting on a nice, clean, blank slate. And it's just waiting to be filled with all the new curriculum and supplies. If this is your first year homeschooling, decide on how you're going to store your curriculum and your supplies. And if you need to clean out a little space for this in your home or purchase what you need to so you have a place for everything. Another big tip is to decide, you know, as you're doing this, how are you going to store the work that your kids are doing during the year? Either stuff that you are gonna wanna keep or maybe you need to put together a homeschool portfolio. This was something I didn't do my first year and I kind of scrambled to pull things together at the end and figure out how I actually wanted to store everything and what I wanted to keep. So right now I use file boxes and file folders to keep good samples of work or anything that's meaningful to us from the year. And then I typically have one three ring binder per kid that I keep as well. But the point is to be thinking about your organization system. 
If you have to collect items for a portfolio, how will you start doing that? Um, if you have to start putting a transcript together, how are you going to keep all of your records organized? Things like that. All right, number two on my list is to plan out the homeschool year. I don't think this is necessary. It really is going to depend on how much you personally like to plan things out. But for me, this is a necessary step. I like to set our start date. I like to plan a rough date for when I want us to be done with our school for the year. And then I plan out any days I know we're gonna be taking breaks or going on vacations or taking days off, things like that. And I like to do this because most curriculums are written for a 180 day schedule for a full year. So this gives me a good idea of whether or not we'll fit everything in and how much wiggle room we have as far as days off and things like that. If you're using a tool like Homeschool Planet, it's really easy to do all of this. And now is a great time when you can start setting up your classes and categories and adding in all of your lesson plans too. I have a video that I shared not too long ago about how I plan out our year using Homeschool Planet. I went ahead and added it to my playlist, New Year Homeschool Prep or New Homeschool Year Prep, something like that. So you can check that out if you want to. So go get Homeschool Planet set up or any other tools you're going to use to plan your lessons. Maybe it's a paper planner, maybe it's an hours tracker like Homeschool Hall or something like that. Get all of that set up and ready to go. I will say that before I used Homeschool Planet, I did kind of the same thing on paper. I just used a year at a glance calendar and I would pick out our start dates, um, pick out our end dates. I circled the days that I knew in advance that we would be taking off. And then I counted up the days I had left. And again, that gave me an idea of how many school days I had planned and how much room we had in our schedule. Okay, number three on my list is to get all of the school supplies ready. Isn't school supply shopping the best? I, I love it. I always loved school supply shopping growing up. I'm not sure if my kids have the same affinity for it being homeschooled, but it's still fun to start the year with new supplies. What I love most about school supply shopping is, well, maybe not the most, but I do love this. Um, we get to purchase exactly what we need. We don't have to go off of a list or buy supplies for an entire class. We just get to get what we need. Um, it's really important though to kind of take an inventory of the things you already have so you aren't purchasing things that you don't need because it can be really easy to go overboard. But usually there's a lot of stuff that we still have on hand from the last year that I don't need to repurchase. And I like to go through all of my teacher manuals for the curriculum that I'm using because typically they will have a list in there of supplies that you need for that specific class. So I'll make a list of everything there that I don't already have and then typically I like to buy everything that I can. So I have it on hand for the year, but if there are, let's say science materials or things that are perishable that I can't buy right away, or I know that I won't buy right away, I will make notes in my paper planner about a week in advance to remind myself to buy them because otherwise I know that I will forget and whatever the lesson or activity is, it's not gonna happen. So I will be doing another video coming up soon, sharing our school supply haul. I grabbed a few things from Amazon. Most of our supplies I'm getting from Walmart this year. Um, in addition to all the supplies our curriculum recommends, I also try to think through what my kids might need for each of their different subjects, like any extra notebooks or pens, markers, loose leaf paper, and things like that. Okay, the next step is that I like to familiarize myself with any of the teacher manuals that I will be using. Usually there is information in the front of the manuals about how to teach the course or how to monitor your kids as they go through it, how to check work, assign grades, all those things. Even if your curriculum is open and go, it's a good idea to go through the teacher manuals and understand the process of each curriculum. I've made this mistake before where I didn't really go through my materials beforehand, thinking it would be easy enough just to open up the first lesson and teach, but uh, I found that it's good to have a plan and at least visualize how a lesson will go and know what you might need to be prepared for, because otherwise your kids are gonna be sitting there waiting 
while you figure it out. I typically won't do this now though. Um, usually I will wait until about a week before we start a curriculum because honestly, I'm probably likely to forget everything if I do it much sooner. So that's what I'm gonna be doing um, this summer since we're adding in a few things at a time instead of all at once. I will pull out and organize specific curriculum books about a week before we'll start using them and I will look through the teacher manuals then. Okay, item number five on the list, what I typically do next is to start planning what the flow of our homeschool days will look like, getting a loose idea together of how we'll move through our different subjects each day, and even what days we're going to do certain subjects. I'm definitely not someone who likes to stick to a strict schedule. It's more of a routine or a flow, but once I know all of the curriculum we'll be using, I like to make a plan for how we'll fit it all into our days, especially because then it gives me a little bit of peace of mind that it's actually doable. And I personally like to write down our routine because it helps me each day have a plan, um, have that direction, help me keep everyone on track. Plus, if you're homeschooling multiple kids and multiple ages, I think it's really helpful to plan out, okay, when my kids can be doing independent work and when I'll be working with a younger child or when we're all gonna come together to work, things like that. So I have our rhythm all planned out. I'll probably share and talk about that in another video, but it's super helpful. Just get an idea of what your ideal your typical homeschool day will look like and you know hold that with a loose hand because this is going to be an idea it's unrealistic to think that every day is going to look exactly how you plan it but having a plan is a good start having a routine in place helps you and your kids know what to expect each day this is also a good time to really think about or finalize how your kids are going to know their daily assignments and what's expected of them. And this is gonna vary depending on how old your kids are, but will you kind of walk them through the day and direct them? Or do you want to have a checklist or planner or something that they'll use so they know what assignments they have to do each day? There's no right or wrong, but you'll wanna think about this. For us, since my kids are older, a lot of days they like to get up really early and start on some of their independent work because if there are things that they can do on their own, they like to get it done so they can be finished earlier in the day. Well, I always have their assignments planned out in Homeschool Planet, so all they have to do is check their checklist each day and they can see exactly what they need to do and check it off when they're done. When they were younger, it was basically just me leading them through each lesson during the day. Um, as they got older, we transitioned to using a, a paper checklist and now finally to homeschool plan it, which is basically a checklist still, we just use it online. Um, but I love that it's so easy to be able to rearrange my lessons there when I need to. And then once I set it up, it's pretty much good to go. Okay, the next thing I like to do is plan out our book baskets and make that first library book reservation. This is something kind of specific to our curriculum. We use My Father's World and they have a lot of books they recommend that you can supplement for what they call book basket time, which is basically just a silent reading time where your kids are reading books relating to what you're learning in history and science. So I will do this about two weeks out from when we'll need the books. So I will either look through my manual for book recommendations and reserve books, or if I'm a few weeks out still, I will write a little reminder on my calendar for me to do this. I think it's a good idea if you have a good library near you to even just plan out when you want to have some library days. Maybe there's a certain day of the week or month that your family takes a trip to the library to pick out new books to read or use any resources there. It's just a nice routine to get into. I don't know about you guys, but we're doing this about every week or so at least to pick up books that I've reserved for my homeschool. And my kids like playing with the toys at the library and just looking through the shelves for new things to read. And even if your curriculum doesn't tell you to do a book basket, having some books at home to supplement the different things that you're learning that your kids can just grab and read when they want to is a good idea, I think. Number seven, the next thing I do is try to prepare for our first official day of school. Now, since we add in our subjects gradually and we also do school throughout the summer, 
we don't have a huge break and then a big first day when we jump back into everything. But we do have a day where it's our first day of doing all the things where we have our full load that we're working with. So this year that is going to be on August 5th. And so I do still like to make this day a little bit special for the kids, make it fun for them and give it a first day of school feel. So my tip is to think about what you want to do um, for this day and what you'll do to kick off your first day of the new homeschool year. For us, I like to do a special breakfast. It's usually Funfetti pancakes or donuts or something. Um, this year I'm planning on decorating our kitchen table a little bit. We'll do our first day of school pictures, you know, some of that traditional stuff. Um, I also have a little about me printable that I've had my kids fill out on the first day of school. We've done this since the beginning. So that's kind of a fun tradition. I have them fill it out and then I stick it in their file folders for the year. And then at the end of the first day, we go out for Froyo. We have done this for years also on our first day and it's a special treat because we don't do it often. So my kids really love this. So anyway, think about if there are any special traditions you'd like to do and plan out what you're gonna need to be ready for your first day of school. Okay, and my final tip, the last thing, but also really the first thing, and the in-between all the time thing is prayer. Pray for this upcoming year that you will have strength and patience and perseverance. Pray for friendships, for community, for the Lord to work through you in all you do with your kids this year. Um, pray for their salvation and that your family would grow closer to and know the Lord better through all that you're learning. If you aren't already in the habit of daily intentional prayer and Bible study, give some thought as to what this is going to look like when you start your new homeschool year. And if you are in the habit of this, what systems will you put in place so that other things don't distract you or get in the way? I know for us, life can get so crazy in the fall when we're in the middle of all of our curriculum and sports and activities start back up and things just get really busy. It can be way too easy to let the things that should be put first in our lives slide to the back burner. So we need to be intentional about this. A few things I love are Bible study fellowship for both me and my kids and the Bible recap app. These are both really helpful in keeping me in God's word daily and even Bible study fellowship for my kids. We're really lucky to have a children's and student ministry where we live. And if you are not taking part in my homeschool prayer challenge, you can absolutely do this as well. Join me here each Monday for a short devotion and prayer for our homeschools each week. I truly hope this has been encouraging for those of you who have been joining in and following along already. Okay, so those are my tips for what you can be thinking about and doing now during the summer to get ready for the new homeschool year to begin. I hope you found these helpful. And if you have any tips of your own, please share them in the comments below. I wanna hear them and I'm sure others would love to hear them too. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful, give it that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Both of those are free and easy ways to support my channel and my content if you're enjoying it and I truly appreciate it. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.